Hey, 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 how's it going and welcome to the show. Now today we're going to be talking about how to waterproof your gear. So, let's get started. Now when it comes to waterproofing your equipment, there are various different options available, all suited for different users with varying needs. For hikers looking to keep their stuff dry, a rain cover is usually sufficient. They are generally the lightest option available, but don't provide any protection from submersion. These often come with many expedition packs fitted specifically to the pack, but can also be purchased separately with a wide range of sizing options. When in nautical scenarios, roll-up dry bags are the way to go, as they are completely waterproof. This is especially true in whitewater scenarios, as the likelihood of capsizing is much higher. But to tell you the truth, I will always use dry bags if I'm going to be in a canoe or a kayak, even on flat water trips. In my opinion, it's always better to be safe than sorry, as you never know what can happen out there. Now when it comes to dry bags, they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, usually having a roll-up top providing the waterproof seal. They are sized based on capacity in liters and generally come in a cylindrical shape, suitable for lining the inside of a pack. In regards to overall construction, dry bags can usually be divided into two different types, both in heavy duty and in ultralight options. Heavy duty dry bags, like those traditionally made by brands like Seal Line, are the age old classic choice for paddlers of all types. These are good dry bags, usually made from heavy duty impermeable materials like vinyl or nylon provide the highest level of protection from submersion while still providing that much needed durability against rips and tears. On the other hand, there are also the ultralight options available, made famous by brands like Osprey and Outdoor Research. These thin, lightweight dry bags, often called pack liners, are usually made from siliconized ripstop nylon and are significantly lighter and more compact, but, in turn, are less durable than their heavy-duty counterparts. Now, there are also large-capacity dry bag backpacks, often sporting different names from various different brands, like the Bills Bag by NRS or the Boundary Packs by Seal Line. These dry bag backpacks are essentially all similar in design and function, coming in various sizing options ranging from 40 to 130 liters. These dry bag backpacks are ideal as a convenient all-in-one portage friendly pack that is super durable and entirely submersion proof. There are also dry bag compression sacks that are essentially a hybrid of a lightweight dry bag and a standard compression sack. These are designed for compressing down gear, specifically sleeping bags and other soft items. This is to maximize space and to reduce clutter in your pack while still providing that much needed protection from submersion. On top of that, there are also some great waterproofing options available for smartphones and other electronics. These compact dry bags are usually sized to fit snug with large smartphones and are usually made with a waterproof see-through polyurethane. These small dry bags are usually designed to be touchscreen compatible, making it possible to operate your device while still in the dry bag. There are also plenty of waterproof hard cases available to be used for delicate and valuable equipment, like those made by Pelican. These shock and waterproof cases come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, providing the highest level of protection from the elements along with physical abuse. If you're looking to bring out delicate and valuable items like expensive camera equipment, then these cases are the best option available. Pelican cases are also extremely customizable, as they come with pick and pluck foam that can be removed and shaped perfectly to fit around your gear. Now to properly close up a dry bag, first pack it up with your gear, leaving a bit of space towards the opening. Then simply line up the roll down tabs at the mouth of the dry bag and fold them. Then tightly roll up the top of the dry bag downwards, rolling it a minimum of three times before clipping the ends together to ensure that it is totally waterproof. To maximize space in your pack, be sure to squeeze the air out of the dry bag prior to closing it off to prevent a buildup of trapped air, also known as bubbling in your pack. When it comes to waterproofing your food, a barrel pack is one of the best options available, especially for large groups. These barrels, usually coming in 30 and 60 liter options, are excellent as they are entirely airtight, waterproof, and are quite durable. They are considered bear resistant, but aren't totally bear proof. The harnesses for these barrels are generally sold separately with some options having a better hip belt and better straps than others, with many options having a universal fit accommodating both 30 and 60 liter barrels. I'm personally a big fan of the Level 6 Bad Hass Harness, as it has a really solid build with a sturdy yet nicely padded hip belt, rugged shoulder straps, and a universal fit. There are also great submersion proof backpack soft coolers like the Yeti Backflip. 
These insulated cooler packs give you the option to bring in perishable food items over extended periods out into the backcountry like fresh meat and vegetables, often for several days at a time. These soft cooler packs are also great for bringing out freshly caught fish and small game on shorter trips. I find with the Yeti backflip filled halfway up with ice packs and kept out of the sun as much as possible, I can usually get them to last and stay frozen for up to four or five days depending on how often it's being opened or closed along with the overall temperature outside. Now it is possible to cheap out and use heavy duty garbage bags to line the inside of your pack. But I'd still recommend you do it properly and use some kind of dry bag as you should always take care of your equipment and avoid getting them wet. Personally, I'm of the mindset that you can't have too many dry bags as they are super versatile and can be used in a wide variety of ways. I have a crap ton of the heavy duty dry bags in various different sizes, using them for waterproofing food, for use as a poop kit, and for lining the inside of my pack. Whereas I use ultralight dry bags, especially in the smaller capacity options, primarily for waterproofing the inside of small pockets in my pack and other essentials like my first aid kit, headlamp, range finder, wallet, and keys. Well, thanks again, everyone. Hope this was helpful. Have a good one and get out there and explore. If you enjoyed this content, give it a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more Tripping Authority videos.